morning everyone. Uh, my name is Fiona Flintan and I am a senior scientist at the International Livestock Research Institute, ILRI, uh, based in Ethiopia and Kenya. Welcome to this session on rangelands, grasslands and participatory rangeland management. Today we have the opportunity to speak with Ken Otieno, who's the Acting Director for Reconcile, uh, an NGO in, based in Kenya, working on conflict issues, um, natural resource management, land governance. And he, Ken is also the coordinator of the Rangelands Initiative Africa of the International Land Coalition. As part of this position, he is uh, coordinating a project on participatory rangeland management and uh, I'm going to ask him some questions about this process and this project and see what we can learn from him and his experiences. So Ken, could you please tell me what kind of challenges are there for pastoralists and, and the land use system that, that they, uh, they use? Pastoralists face uh, many challenges, many, many challenges. And some of these challenges is uh, the inability to have their land tenure, tenure rights uh, properly uh, integrated within the different tenure regimes. There are existing mechanisms for managing their, uh, their, their, their systems, but this lacks, uh, oftentimes lacks a formal integration into statutory uh, frameworks within national governments. So can, how did you go about finding a solution for these, for these challenges and different issues? A, a coalition or a group of organizations came together to respond to the problems of uh, rangelands and pastoralism. Uh, by way of designing a program, and the program being participatory rangelands management. And lastly, it also helps, it was designed in order to help uh, countries such as Kenya and Tanzania to recognize participatory land use planning and management as an important and integral part of land use planning. Yeah, that's, that's really very interesting. Can you tell me a bit more? Participatory rangelands management program that allows a step-by-step -step management of rangelands and pastoralism. It enables communities to work together with government, uh, civil society organizations, and other research institutions to basically agree on defined conservation and rehabilitation areas of rangelands. It also allows communities to get new ideas and new mechanisms for uh, managing their natural resources and more specifically managing rangelands and livestock production system. Okay, um, and so how did you actually implement participatory rangeland management? The process takes uh, different steps which are adopted according to uh, policies and uh, legal frameworks plans in a different country. The steps involves communities first being identified uh, to generate or to, to, to restructure them in a manner that they are able to have a leadership framework. And then the second thing that happens with the, with the process is that it's also uh, together with the communities they then uh, identify the different resources that they have the things like plants uh, water points grazing areas those are the things that they have to identify and put plans on how they are going to be managed in uh, making sure that you create uh, a rangeland rehabilitation area you have to take these, all these steps into account and then identify these areas and secure them to see as pilot areas how they are getting managed by the communities and 
application of different skills and knowledge based on the existing environment and based on the uh, you know the different expertise that come with it this is really impressive and clearly structured what would you like to share as a take-home message for our global audience at the Digital Global Landscapes Forum Conference? Let pastoralism and rangelands be given the same prominence that agriculture is, is given. And for the African national, uh, for the African governments, it is really, really important to recognize that the pastoral communities is part of a bigger population. PRM presents an opportunity for pastoralists, pastoralism, and rangelands management. And um, its application as a step-by-step -step process kind of gives different ideas and different opportunities and for different approaches where uh, this, uh, the research component of uh, rangelands management is is applied, the community indigenous knowledge is applied, and then the practitioner's uh, knowledge is applied. Thank you so much, Ken, for these insights coming directly from the ground in Kenya.